Hey everybody, what's up? I know it's been uh, quite a while since I've uploaded a Pokemon Wi-Fi battle. I um, went searching over the interwebs and found myself on Cerebi. Now before you knock it, not everybody on Cerebi is a noob. There are people on there that actually have some skill. Like the person you're going to see me battle. He went by the username DMP and I went by not my typical username. So anyways, as you can see, it's a UU battle. It's a whole new team. Now, wait a minute. Togekiss is in UU. Some people are like, wait a minute. You can't win in UU without Togekiss. I'm like, yes, I can. So, you know, I decided to make a whole new team without Togekiss. Anyways, on to the battle. Um, if you can notice, the one big problem I'll have, I always have, and I've noticed, is Heracross. So, but anyways, he leads with, um... Wow, I forgot the name of that Pokemon already. That's terrible. Anyways, I lead with Aerodactyl. I figured he was going to save a life. Wow. Okay. I figured because Prankster was going to taunt me first, and that would lock me out of taunt and stealth rocks. So, after him will o wisping me, he must have thought, um, he pretty much gives away he doesn't have the taunt, most likely. He burns me with the will o wisp after I get the stoners off, which doesn't do a whole lot. I taunt him because I don't want no more, t um, will o wisp spamming around. So, I get my stealth rocks up after he does foul play, and I was like, wow, foul play does a lot coming from that thing. And, you know, Sableye doesn't exactly have the best of stats. Period. So I go out into my scarf, pouring on Z, my annoyance. So this is a little bit of a different one uh, compared to the old annoyance. Um, just a slight tweak in the EVs. So I decide to lock myself into um, Thunderbolt because I got the attack boost, not the special attack boost. Slight sad face, but it does a good bit to this Blastoise. And I'm like, it's not bad. If he just leaves it in, you know, I'm pretty sure I can outspeed and take it out. But he switches. And he goes out into Uxie. And Uxie, we all know, is a special defense tank. <coughs> that thing can take any hit, just about. So I get the Thunderbolt. If it does a meh amount, not that great. I'm like, I gotta switch out because I don't want to be locked in the Thunderbolt. And I'll be able to do any damage to this thing. So I switch on to Top Gear, predicting him to actually start setting up uh, Stealth Rocks, which he does. And I wanted to go for the rapid spin here to blow away those rocks. But I know that Sableye is lurking. So I'm like, no, I'm going to go for the Stone Edge to safely predict um, the Sableye switch. And I managed to predict that. And the Stone Edge does a decent bit. I'm like, that's not too bad at all. But, you know, I can't rapid spin on a Ghost type. So I switch out and go out to Tito to get the Intimidate off, to reduce the attack power on that thing, and yes, I know, I'm taking the Stealth Rocks damage. In this uh, version of Tito, uh, I actually dropped Crunch and put Close Combat in, and it's got leftovers. And obviously, because I'm a Fire type, I can't be burned by Lois. So that was an excellent prediction on my part. He goes for the Recover, and for a second there, I had forgotten that Sable had Prankster, and I go for the Fire Fang, and I'm thinking, well, if I can inflict a burn... It'll make my life in this battle just a little bit easier because then I can sort of negate the leftovers recovery. So I go for another Fire Fang, and it does a decent bit. And he goes for that foul play, and I'm like, whoa, 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 that's a lot. That did a lot of damage, even with an Intimidate on that thing. So he's going to switch out now and go out into Blastoise, correctly predicting the next Fire Fang. And I should have went for a Thunder Fang here. Um... Because that would have probably taken it out. So after the leftovers animation, I'm going to go for the Thunder Fang to get the safe KO. And of course, the one time I needed it to hit, I miss. <laughs> so now he's actually able to spin and take out away my rocks. So now my entry hazards are gone. I have no way of getting them set up, so I go for another Thunder Fang. Had I just gone for an extreme speed in the first place, Blastoise would have already been out of there. But you know, it is what it is. You pick your moves and you go with it. So now he goes down to Shaolin, and I know it has to be a Scarf Medi Medicham. They're almost always Scarfed, in my experience. So I go for the extreme speed just to get some damage on him. He doesn't miss the high jump kick, and that does take my Tito out. And this is where I got into... Uh, Back out into Annoyance, because I know Scarf Z will always outspeed a Scarf Metacham. So I get the special attack boost, thank god. And I go for the Thunderbolt, and that easily takes out Metacham, because Metacham does not have the greatest special defense. And this is, he goes on to Heracross. Now this is where the battle does get a little bit interesting. And I can, you know, I can understand why he went for the move he went for. I go for Thunderbolt, and it does almost two-thirds. He goes for Megahorn, hoping it would KO... 
and it doesn't KO. He gets now obviously has the cut boost, and obviously the reason he went for that is because I have Mew and Cresselia, and that would just train wreck those two. So I go for the Thunderbolt on that Uxi, and because I actually got the special attack boost this time, it does a little bit more. And I go for another Thunderbolt, thinking, oh, I could get some more damage on this thing. Possibly take it out if a crit occurred, but a, no hacks there. And he gets the U-turn off. And I'm like sitting there, I'm like, what's he going to go out into? And he goes out into Shadowfire, his Houndoom. I'm like, things just got interesting. So I go out into my hip on top, my top gear. And this is my spinner, because I realized I needed a spinner on this team. And I've never actually used a spinner before, so I figured, why not try it? But I go for a Stone Edge here. He switches in to Sableye, predicting me to over-predict and go for the close combat. But I don't miss that Stone Edge, and that takes out that Sableye. And when that Sableye fainted, kind of wiped my forehead. It's like, whew, you know, that thing's gone. I don't have to worry about it as much. And he goes on to Heracross, and he airlaces me. And I'm like, what the? Whoa! Like, just the move surprised me out of nowhere. And I was like, yes, I survived. So I go for the close combat, because um, Stone Edge could have missed. And then Sucker Punch isn't very effective. So, and it's not very effective because it's a bug type, part bug type, but it was enough to take it out. So now he goes out into Shadowfire, back out of Shadowfire's on him, and I go for the Sucker Punch just to get some damage on this thing because I know, thanks to the minus one special defense, I'm going to be able to be taken out by pretty much the same move he has. And he goes for the Shadow Ball, and he's life orbed, and I'm like, you know, I can go into Cresselia, I know I can survive just barely from a stab Dark Pulse, Fire off a hand power fighting and life orb plus the one hand power fighting, two life orbs. It would be, you know, enough that the shadow fire would faint from life orb, but no, he scores a critical hit. I'm like, that's great. It's all down to Mew, and I've never used Mew before. My El Uno, the one. And this is actually um, a Swords Dance Mew, too. A little bit of my um, own twist on it. I actually went. Um, 252 HP and then split the remaining EVs between defense and special defense, you know. And he almost takes out my Mew with that Dark Pulse. I'm a little late on narrating that part. And I was like, holy carpe diem, that is a little too much. Like, I, I you know, had he scored a crit, it would have been GG, and I was getting ready to type GG. And I looked down and seen I survived, and I went to click Waterfall, because I don't know, maybe a Waterfall might have taken him out, but I click roost by accident and it actually kind of helps out a little bit because he u-turns he's gonna obviously u-turns does a little bit i go for the sword stance because i know i need a stab boost to take this thing out so it's not a forever battle he thunder waves me and this is where i crack a little bit of a smile on my face because that's right synchronize kicks in i'm like great he's paralyzed i'm paralyzed might take a little bit longer but i'm probably gonna Probably got the battle secured. Well, I'm paralyzed next turn, and he reveals he has the heal bell. I'm like, oh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> it's a support Uxie. I thought it was like a dual screener Uxie all along, but now it's a support Uxie. And he goes for another U-turn, and right now I'm feeling, unless I get parahacks to the ends of the earth, I'm probably going to win this match. I go for the waterfall thinking plus two attack I'll be able to take this thing out and it lives with a sliver I'm like one more turn as long as he doesn't parahax me to death or crits me all along the same time I'll be able to win this so I go for a waterfall and it does take down his Uxie so good game DMP guys remember to like comment subscribe and stay tuned for the Ace Combat Assault Horizons video that I will be uploading shortly and for more battles. I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna start doing some more showdowns too, um, experimenting with teams and such. There's a um, actually, a special attack Groudon I want to try out. I know it's a gimmicky thing, but I want to try it out. So until next time, see you guys. Oh yes. Also, the song is "Hope Runs Deep" from Gears of War 2. It's a piano arrangement I found on YouTube. Later.